15 minute or less lecture series, human anatomy. Chapter 16, nervous tissue. The nervous system is organized functionally in three main parts. There is the sensory function. These are the receptors that detect stimulus in our environment or inside our bodies. And then the sens uh, sensory neurons that then carry that information to the central nervous system. So the sensory neurons, often the receptors as well, carry information to the central nervous system. Then there's the integrative function. This is the processing of the sensory information and deciding what, if anything, to do about this information. This occurs by the interneurons found in the central nervous system. So this is the processing within the central nervous system. And then the third function is the motor function. These are the commands sent by the central nervous system to the effectors. The neurons that carry those are called the motor neurons, and they will link to the effectors the muscles, muscle tissues, or glands, and cause an effect. Anatomically, the nervous system is broken down into two main regions, the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes the nerves, the ganglia, the plexuses, and the receptors that detect the stimulus. Uh, you can also divide the peripheral nervous system into a few subcomponents. There's the somatic nervous system. The som somatic Nervous system is what we voluntarily control. Most all of the sensory information that we receive, we are very conscious of. And so the somatic sensory neurons are carrying the information to the central nervous system. And then we consciously control the skeletal muscles via the somatic motor neurons, sending commands from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscles. Then there's the autonomic nervous system. This is involuntarily controlled. There are autonomic sensory neurons that will send information to the central nervous system. Often we are unaware of the sensory information being sent by the autonomic nervous system. And then the autonomic motor neurons will send commands to the various visceral effectors to cause a response. These effectors include uh, various organs in our body, uh, glands throughout the body, and um, many things that we should be thankful we don't have to consciously think about. The autonomic nervous system can be broken down into two subdivisions, the sympathetic division that tends to uh, give us the fight or flight responses, things like speeding up heart rate, uh, dilating irises, uh, breathing in faster, more blood flow to skeletal muscle tissue, etc. And the parasympathetic division, which gives us the rest and digest responses. There's things like slow down the heart rate, slow down the rate of breathing, stimulate the functions of the digestive system, and so on. There is also a third subdivision to the peripheral nervous system called the enteric nervous system. This is a series of nerve tissue found within the gastrointestinal tract. This is often referred to as the brain of the gut because the uh, gastrointestinal tract can act uh, independent of the central nervous system. This means that we have four separate neural networks, four separate uh, wires, as it were, connecting to the various structures of our body that we can uh, control. And this is just another view of that same idea, uh, somatic nervous system, uh, autonomic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system, and how they are all interconnected. A neuron. A neuron is the most famous of the cells of nervous tissue. The neuron possesses electrical excitability. It can receive some sort of stimulus, causing it to transmit a charge across its uh, plasma membrane. Uh, this involves the movement of charged ions across the membrane to generate this action potential. So the neuron has uh, three main regions. Uh, the first is the cell body. The cell body contains all the very structures you expect in a cell. It includes the nucleus, the cytoplasm, the various organelles, mitochondria, endoplasm, reticulum, and uh, so forth. Also found in the cell body are nissel bodies. These are clusters uh, found of the rough endoplasmic reticulum that is undergoing high amounts of protein synthesis. So therefore, lots of ribosomes are also concentrated in that area. And this tends to give the cell body a grayish color. Also found within the cell body are uh, specialized structures of the cyto, uh, 
skeleton, including neurofibrils and mitotubules. And these specialized structures are involved in carrying uh, materials down to the ends of axons or occasionally up from them. Also found on the uh, plasma membrane of the cell uh, body are somatic spines, little bumps in the plasma membrane that are sites that are available for synapsing, making contact with other neurons. Uh, next with the dendrites. There are usually many dendrites that are short processes coming off of the cell body. The dendrites are important for receiving information and then passing it down the neuron. Uh, they possess dendritic spines. Again, these are little bumps on the uh, plasma membrane of the dendrites where synapsing can occur. Sometimes the dendrites also act as uh, sensory receptors. Finally, the axon. The uh, axon is a long process coming off of the uh, cell body that goes to the various targets, either neurons or effectors, that is going to synapse with. At the very beginning of the axon is an area referred to as the axon hillock. This is a cone-shaped structure that is being formed off of the cell body. Uh, the New term for the cytoplasm of the axon is exoplasm, while the new term for the plasma membrane of the axon is axolemma. Occasionally, but rarely, occasionally you'll get axon collaterals. These are side branches going up to other areas. However, usually this does not occur. Usually an axon is one very long structure that then branches into much smaller uh, structures at its terminus. Uh, this branching area is referred to as the axon terminal aborization. So you end up with many fine processes that will then make synapses with various cells. And at the very ends of these axon terminals is a widened area referred to as the synaptic end bulb that will be important in forming the synapse. There are three uh, structural varieties of the neuron. There is the most common, the multipolar neuron, which I have already described. There's the very rare bipolar neuron, where you have a, a large branching of dendrites at one end, they then lead via one process to the cell body that then leads to the axon. These are primarily found in some of the uh, specialized sensory structures in the head. And then there's the uh, somewhat more common unipolar neuron. With the unipolar neuron, the dendrite branches lead directly to the axon, and the axon then carries the information to its ends, bypassing the cell body. Uh, most of the sensory neurons are actually unipolar neurons. Uh, at a synapse, you have the presynaptic neuron that all forms a synapse with a postsynaptic neuron. At the synapse, the two do not actually physically touch. There's usually a small space between them, and chemicals called neurotransmitters have to be released from the presynaptic neuron to transmit the information to the postsynaptic neuron. Uh, occasionally, there are the rare electrical synapses where the membranes of the two cells actually touch and gap junctions are formed, allowing fluids and charged ions to pass from one cell to the next, allowing the action potential to uh, be transmitted directly from one cell to the next cell. However, again, this is relatively rare. So here is a close-up of a synapse. You have the presynaptic neuron, uh, the uh, synaptic involve at the end of the presynaptic neuron, the synaptic cleft that is separating it from the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. You have uh, synaptic vesicles within the synaptic end bulb that store the neurotransmitters. And then when a nerve impulse arrives, it'll open voltage-gated calcium ion channels. The calcium enters the synaptic end bulb. It binds to synaptic vesicles, causing them to release the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft via exocytosis. Neurotransmitters then cross the cleft via diffusion and bind to ligand-gated ion channels, aka bind to receptors that are also ligand-gated ion channels. When the neurotransmitter binds to these, they then open, allowing uh, ions, usually sodium ions, to pass into the postsynaptic uh, neuron, and this could lead to the action potential being generated. An action potential, the nerve impulse, is a change in charge over a localized area. So if threshold is reached and this occurs, then the change in charge will then stimulate neighboring voltage-gated ion channels to open, thereby transmitting the impulse down the length of the axon. Uh, disorder associated nervous tissue, you have depression, uh, where people feel sad, hopeless, suicidal thoughts. This has been linked to an imbalance in neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Major depression can last for more than two weeks. Dysthymia is episodes of depression that alternate with feeling normal. And bipolar disorder is episodes of depression that alternate with feeling extremely 
related. And here you can see a uh, different activity between a depressed individual and someone who is not depressed. Uh, neuroglia. Neuroglia are other cells found in the nervous tissue, and they're actually more of these than neurons. Neuroglia cells include astrocytes. Astrocytes are specialized cells that are important for making contact with the neurons, supporting the neurons, and providing proper uh, environment for the neurons. They also make contact with blood capillaries. They're the prot protoplasmic astrocytes that are short and found primarily in the gray matter versus the fibrous astrocytes, which have longer processes and are tend to be found in white matter of the brain. Uh, astrocytes functions include supporting the neurons structurally, uh, forming the blood-brain barrier to limit what comes in and out of the cell, helping to maintain appropriate chemical environment for the neurons, maybe a role in learning and memory, and also will fill in damaged areas of the central nervous system when necessary. Then we have the oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes are cells that send out these processes to various portions of axons of different neurons, and they wrap around that part of the axon over and over and over again, forming the six insulating structure called a myelin sheath. Myelin sheaths are important because they help to speed up the transmission of the nerve impulse. Then microglial cells. Microglial cells wander around in the central nervous system acting as phagocytes. They will engulf and remove uh, cellular debris, any pathogens they find, and try to uh, also get rid of any damaged nervous tissue. Uh, epidermal cells are specialized epithelial cells that line the ventricles of the brain. These are spaces in the brain. They then produce cerebral spinal fluid and produce it into the uh, uh, ventricles, and then they will use their cilia to cause that cerebral spinal fluid to be moved throughout the brain and around the brain and spinal cord. Uh, in the peripheral nervous system, we have two cells. We have Schwann cells. Schwann cells function like oligodendrocytes. They wrap around one section of an axon and wrap around it again and again and again, forming a myelin sheet that provides insulation and speeds up the transmission of the impulse. Then we have satellite cells. Satellite cells wrap around areas where there are a lot of neural cell bodies, and this helps to protect those neural cell bodies. And when you have a large group of neural cell bodies in one area in the peripheral nervous system, that is called a ganglion. Myelination is very important. It helps to uh, electrically insulate the axon, thereby increasing the speed of the nerve impulse, and it is white in color. Uh, the myelin sheath does not cover the entire axon. There are little gaps between sections of the sheath. These are called the nodes of Ranvier, and it ba basically appears that the nerve impulses jump from one node to the next, and most axons are myelinated. The few that are not still associate with a Schwann cell. However, it is more a structural arrangement to help organize the axon. White matter is basically aggregations of myelinated axons. So anywhere we have lots of myelinated axons, the material will look whitish in color. And these are the wires that are transmitting the information, the action potential. Gray matter, on the other hand, is areas that have a high density of neural cell bodies, and therefore lots of synapsing occurring there. There will also be dendrites, axons, etc. However, there will be a large density of neural cell bodies, and they will be gray in color, making that portion of the brain tissue grayish in color. This is tends to be found uh, inside in the central areas of the spinal cord and on the outside, the cerebral cortex of the brain. And this is the hard drive where information is being processed. Uh, so here is some vocabulary. Be sure to look it over. Uh, some just orders associated with nervous tissue include uh, immunotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease, which leads to a progressive degeneration of the somatic motor system, leading to atrophy of the muscles and eventually death. Uh, multiple sclerosis, which is a progressive demyelination of neurons of the central nervous system, impairing sensory perception and motor coordination. This is also a degenerative disorder, and it is breaking down, destroying the oligodendrocytes. And then there's Parkinson's disease, a slowly progressive disorder affecting muscle movements and balance, characterized by things like stiff posture, tremors, reduced facial expressions, and also some cognitive uh, issues. I hope that was helpful.